I just wanted to put together a little video for you. Uh, this is a class based on a class that I teach both for my seniors as well as for addiction recovery. It's a very nice little restorative type of practice. Uh, this can be done, I'm gonna be working from a mat today, but you could also do this from a chair. I do have students that work from a wheelchair or also from a bed. So uh, wherever's gonna feel the most comfortable for you. So don't feel like you have to get down onto the floor on a mat. Uh, I will be queuing for everything. So if I don't get to the queue for you right away, hang in there, I will get to you. But I'm gonna be working for a mat today, so I'll be starting probably with those cues first, and then I'll give everyone else's cues later. So what you need for this practice, if you'd like to work from a mat, grab a yoga mat. You may also want to grab a yoga block. If you don't have a yoga block, a book or anything could work for you too. You may also like a yoga strap. If you don't have a yoga strap, you could use a belt or a strap or a towel or anything that, um, that feels like it would work for you even a scarf. Um, for our end in our practice, or even in our beginning, during our Shavasana, you may want a bolster or even a blanket just to keep yourself a little warm. So I'm gonna be starting down on the floor, just coming to a comfortable position. Uh, we'll do just a moment or two of quiet meditation, just allowing our practice to settle in. And as you do this, I invite you to find an anchor. And an anchor could be anything. Could be your heartbeat or your breath. Could be the music or the sounds in the room. Anything that as your mind wanders, gives you that place to come back to, to help refocus the thoughts and the energy. So just taking a couple moments here. And if you'd like, even just softly closing the eyes. If it's uncomfortable for you to close the eyes, you could just come to a soft gaze. begin with just bending the knees, placing the soles of the feet onto the earth, and then taking the feet as wide as the edges of the mat. For those of you in a chair, you could just widen out the feet a little bit and the knees and join us from a seated position. From here, we're going to drop the knees over to the left. and then back up to the top and over to the right. Just taking this slowly and gently back and forth at your own pace. And if you want to deepen this stretch, turn the head to the opposite direction of the knees. do one more flow to each side and then just allow the knees to come over to the left 
Just coming down and holding. And then if it feels available to you today, taking that left ankle, crossing it over the right knee, that's going to deepen that stretch. So if that feels like too much, just back off of that. And then we'll slowly release that, taking the knees up and over to the right. Again, just come down and hold first. And then if it feels available, taking the right ankle, crossing it over the left knee. And then we'll slowly release that, bringing the knees back up to the top. We'll pull the knees into the chest, giving them a nice hug, maybe a little back rub. For those of you in the chair, you can either pull the knees into the chest or a little forward fold. Give the knees a gentle hug. And then we'll place the soles of the feet back down onto the earth. We'll take the left ankle, cross it over the right knee, then grab the right thigh, pull it into the chest, and flex the feet. Try to release the tension out of the neck and the shoulders. For those of you in the chair, you can either pull that thigh into the chest or a forward fold over the leg. Again, try to release the tension out of the neck and the shoulders. And then we'll bring that right foot back down to the earth. Still keeping the left ankle crossed over the right knee. Drop the right knee over to the right. Taking that left leg with it. For those of you in the chair, you can do this twist also by just twisting the torso over to the left. And we'll bring that right knee back up to the top. Release the left ankle. Now cross the right ankle over the left knee. Grab the left thigh, pull it into the chest, and flex the feet. Again, try to release the tension out of the neck and the shoulders. Those of you in the chair, you can either pull that thigh into the chest or forward fold.
and we'll bring the left foot back down to the earth. Still keeping the right ankle crossed over the left knee. Drop the left knee over to the left. Taking that right leg with it. Again, for those of you in the chair, a twist to the right. And then we'll bring that knee back up to the top. Release the ankle. Pull the knees into the chest. Give them another nice hug. Again, for those of you in the chair, either pulling the knees into the chest or forward fold. Then we'll place the soles of the feet back down onto the earth. If you have a yoga strap, let's go ahead and grab that now. And we're going to start with the right foot. Just placing that foot into the strap and extending that leg up towards the ceiling. And you may want to give yourself a little length in the strap so you can let the, hand, the arms rest down on the mat. The left leg can either bend or straight, whichever feels best for you. Find what feels comfortable. The right leg, extend it up towards the ceiling. Feel like the heel is pushing into the ceiling above you. And then again, try to release the tension out of the neck and the shoulders. For those of you in the chair, just extending that leg into a strap out in front of you. Getting that nice stretch across the back of the leg. Then we're going to gently turn the heel left and right, letting the whole leg rotate in its socket. We'll take the leg out to the right. Go only as far as feels comfortable for you. For those of you on the floor, you may even want to grab a yoga block and place it underneath the thigh to support the leg. And feel free to reposition the left leg. And we're going to bring that leg up and over to the left. If you have the yoga strap in the right hand, move it over to the left hand. We're going to twist only as far as feels comfortable. If you'd like, extending that right arm out to the side and turning the head to the right. Again, feel free to reposition the left leg. We'll bring that leg back up to the top, release the strap, and let's move it over to the left leg. Again, either extending that leg up towards the ceiling or reaching it out in front. Again, using the strap to just gently pull the foot towards the shin. Try to release the tension out of the neck and the shoulders. And 
and gently turn that heel left and right, letting that leg rotate in its socket. Take the leg out to the side. <clears throat> Again, only as far as feels comfortable for you. Feel free to support the leg. And then we'll take that leg up and over to the right. Again, only as far as feels comfortable. If you have the strap in the left hand, move it over to the right. And you can deepen the stretch by extending the left arm out to the side and turning the head to the left. Again, feel free to reposition the right leg if you need. Bring that leg back up to the top. Release the strap. You can set that aside. We'll give the knees another nice hug. Maybe another little back rip for those of you on the floor. And we'll place the soles of the feet back down onto the earth. We're going to tuck the feet into the towards the tailbone. Arms are resting down along the sides. Palms are turned up towards the ceiling. And shoulders are pulled down away from the ears. Core is engaged. Think about pulling that belly button in towards the spine, but don't hold your breath. Then from here, we're going to gently lift the hips up off the earth, reaching them up towards the ceiling and slowly lowering them back down. Take this at your own pace. For those of you in the chair, you can do this also, just by placing the hands on the armrest or the seat of the chair and creating a little hip lift. If you'd like, you can even follow the flow of the breath here. a choice as you lift and lower. You can either lift and lower the torso as one unit, or you can go vertebrae by vertebrae, maybe even a combination of the two. For those of you who have a yoga block, you could take the yoga block and place it between the knees. That will give you a little extra stability as you lift and lower. If you'd like to add the arms to this, you can. So as the hips rise, the arms float up overhead like a big rainbow. And as the hips lower, the arms come back down to the sides. Just take this all at your own pace.
So from here, I'm going to let it be Yogi's choice. Maybe you continue to flow your bridge either with or without the arms. Or maybe you decide to just hold at the top. If you decide to hold at the top, you could also bring the hands underneath the back for a chest opener. Or if you have the yoga block, you could place that underneath the tailbone for supported bridge. And for those of you that are holding at the top, either with or without the block, you also have the option of adding a leg lift. Just extending a leg up towards the ceiling. Or if you have the yoga, and at certain point, changing that leg. Or if you have the yoga block, you could extend both legs up towards the ceiling. Again, find what feels best for you. Maybe even a little combination of things. And then we're going to slowly release that, bringing the legs and the feet and the hips all the way back down to the earth. We'll give the knees another nice hug. And we're going to roll over to the side, placing the hands on the earth and pushing ourselves up to seated. So we're going to start with the legs out in front of us. You may want your yoga strap nearby. Up to you. I'm going to scooch back here a little bit so you can see. We're going to start by taking the left foot towards the corner of the mat. The right leg is going to tuck in. So you have some options here too. Not everyone's going to be able to tuck both the legs in tight to the, to the other leg. You may be out here, that's okay. Find wherever feels the most comfortable for you. We're gonna lengthen through the spine, get as much space between the vertebrae as you can, and a little twist to your left. Then we're gonna walk the hands down. So you could let the hands rest here on the, sh on the shin if you'd like, or if you have a yoga strap, you could put that around the foot to help get you a little closer to the foot, or you can even just grab the foot underneath with the hand, up to you. Find what feels best. And then we're gonna make our way back up to the top. We'll untwist, bringing the hands to center, walk the hands up. Make our way back up to the top. Extend both legs. Shake them out a little bit. Then we're going to take the right foot to the corner of the mat. Left leg is going to tuck in. Again, wherever feels most comfortable for you. Lengthen through the spine. Get as much space between the vertebrae as you can. A little twist to your right. Come on down. Again, you can use the hands on the shin or underneath the foot. Or use that yoga strap. And we'll make our way back up to the top. Untwist, come to center, come straight down.
We'll make our way back up to the top. Straighten out both legs. Shake them out. All right, we're gonna tuck the knees in underneath. We're coming to kneeling table. So if you have any knee issues or wrist issues, fold up your mat, give yourself some extra cushion. You could also use a yoga blanket underneath the knees or the hands. If you have <clears throat> wrist issues, walk the hands a little bit forward, or you can come fist as wrists. Find what feels best for you. For those of you with the chair and are not going down to the floor, feel free to come to standing and just place the hands on the seat of the chair, or you can stay seated and just place the hands on the knees. Whoever's gonna feel the most comfortable for you. Core is engaged. Think about pulling the belly button up towards the spine, but don't hold your breath. And from here, we're gonna arch the back like a Halloween cat. And then drop the chest down towards the earth. Let the head rise. Exhale if you come forward for cat. And inhale as you come back up to the top for cow. Take this at your own pace. Those of you that would like to add a progression to this, this is optional. You can add an arm, excuse me, an arm and a leg, or just one or the other. And as you inhale and come, or excuse me, as you exhale and come forward, you can pull that in. And as you inhale, bringing that back out. That's all optional for you. Do one more flow and then come back to neutral. Now from here, we're gonna take the left shoulder towards the left hip, look over that shoulder, and then come back to center. Now take the right shoulder to the right hip, look over that shoulder, come back to center. We're just gonna take this back and forth at your own pace. Do one more flow to each side, coming back to center. From here, we're going to tuck the toes underneath. Those of us on the floor, we're gonna push up into down dog. Feel free to paddle the feet here a little bit if you'd like, or you can take the heels and press them down towards the earth. From here, we'll walk the hands in towards the feet or the feet into the hands. We will all inhale, reverse swan dive. Coming up to standing. And exhale, hands down through heart center. All right, we're gonna turn to face the long side of our mat, starting in wide leg. We'll take the left foot, turn it out 90 degrees. Pick up the right heel, turn it out a little bit. Stuff that right of the left knee over the ankle. Double check it. Make sure it's directly over the ankle. And when you're ready, let it flow. Just bend and straighten, just that left knee. If you'd like to add the arms to this, you can. So as you stack the knee, the arms float up. And as you come back up to the top, they float back down. Again, take this all at your own pace. We're gonna 
do one more flow and then we'll meet back at the top. Reach in the arms out in front, thumbs up. Pull the arms up to the side. Stack that knee and look out over that left thumb. Open up the hands, turn the palms towards the ceiling. Right hand comes down onto the thigh. If you have a chair nearby, you could also place it on the chair. Left arm reaches up and over for our side bend. And we'll take that left hand back down onto the chair or the thigh, or you can go elbow to thigh if you would like. Right hand starts on the hip, open up that shoulder, and then if you'd like, we'll extend the arms. If you feel comfortable, this arm could go straight towards the ceiling or overhead. You also have the option of the right hand down to the floor. Up to you. Yeah, the arms extended, bring them back in. We'll place that left hand on the thigh, press yourself up to standing, turn the feet, step it in, shake it out a little bit. We're coming back to wide leg. This time turning the right foot out 90 degrees. Pick up the left heel, turn it out. Stack that knee over the ankle, double check. And when you're ready, let it flow, bend and straighten. Again, you can add the arms if you would like. Do one more flow and then again meet back at the top. Reaching the arms up in front, thumbs up. Pull the arms up to the side. Stack that knee and look out over the right thumb. Open up the hands, turn the palms towards the ceiling. Left hand comes down onto the chair or the thigh. Right arm up and over for our side bend. And then we'll take that right hand Again, onto the chair or the thigh, or elbow to thigh if you would like. Right, uh, excuse me, left hand starts on the hip, open up the shoulder, and then again, if you'd like, extending the arms. If you have the arms extended, bring them back in. Placing the hand on the thigh, push yourself up to standing, turn the feet, step it in, kick it out a little bit. All right, we're going to come to the top of our mats, coming back to standing mountain. The fingers are reaching or down towards the earth. Crown of the head is reaching for the ceiling. Knees are soft, don't lock them out. Lift the toes, make sure they're not gripping the earth. And find equilibrium across the feet, freakly weighted front to back and side to side. We're going to step back with the right leg, bringing that heel down to the earth. Then take the left knee, stack it over the ankle, double check it, make sure it's directly over the ankle, 
If you see a bend like this, you are going to strain your knee. So you want to just come straight over that angle. And then pull that left hip back just a little bit. That's going to help align the hips. From here, we're going to just let this flow bend and straighten just the left knee. We're going to stack that knee over the ankle, pull that left hip back, double check the hips, and if you're okay here, stay here, or if you'd like, you could bring the arms up overhead for warrior. You also have the option, if you'd like, to take the hands behind the back for a chest opener. Find what feels most comfortable for you. To straighten that front knee. Feel free to readjust the hands here. Hinging from the hips, forward fold. So keeping that back flat as if it was a table. If you have the hands behind the back, you can also bring them up off the back for a chest opener. Have the hands up, bring them back down. We'll make our way back up to the top. A little bend in that front knee. Step the back leg forward, shake it out a little bit. Coming back to standing mountain. This time stepping back with the left leg. Bring that heel down to the earth. Stacking the right knee over the ankle. Again, double check it. And when you're ready, let it flow. One thing I forgot to mention with you on the other side is if you have balance issues, take the feet wider towards the sides of the mat. It's going to give you a little better stability. Think of it as widening out train tracks. And then we're going to stack that knee, pull that right hip back just a little bit, and then find your arm placement. It can be different than what you did on the other side. Up to you. Straighten that front knee, hinging from the hips, forward fold. Again, feel free to readjust the hands here. And if you have the hands behind the back, feel free to bring them up off the back for the chest opener. If you have the hands up, bring them back down. We'll make our way back up to the top. A little bend in that front knee. Step the back leg forward, shake it out. We do just a little bit of balance work before we make our way back down to the earth. Starting in standing mountain. Again, fingers reaching down towards the earth. Knees are soft. Find that equilibrium. And find a, a spot in front of you that's not moving. Something you'll be able to use to maintain your gaze. We're going to start by shifting our weight to the right leg, making that left foot just a little bit lighter. Starting to peel that heel up off the earth. If you're okay here, stay right here. Or we're going to come to stork today, starting to bring that left knee up. And then we're going to slowly bring that one back down, shake it out a little bit. Mine's not so good today. All right, coming back to standing mountain. 
and find your gaze, find the softness in the knees. We'll shift to the left leg this time. And as you're ready, find your stork on this side. Now it might be different, and everybody's stork is different. And then we'll slowly bring that one down, shake it up. Let's come back to the top of our mats. Returning back to standing mountain. We'll inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Reach the hands down towards the toes or as close as you can get. Inhale, halfway lift, letting the hands slide up the shins to the knees. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan nut up to the top. And exhale, hands down through heart center. Inhale, up to the top. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan nut. Exhale, hands down through heart center. Inhale, up to the top. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Placing the hands on the mat. Stepping back with one leg, bring that knee down to the earth. We'll bring the other leg back. We're all going to have a seat. <clears throat> so for those of you on the floor, we're going to make our way all the way back down to the earth. Otherwise, for those of you in the chair, you can just kind of hang out and have a seat. For those of us on the floor, we're going to come all the way down. You can either grab one thigh, roll yourself back, or grab two invisible strings, allow them to lower you down to the earth. When you get to the bottom, Pull the knees into the chest. Let's give those knees a nice little hug again. And then I'd like you all to imagine that you have markers or crayons or pencils on your knees. We're going to draw on the ceiling. So maybe you make little knee circles or zigzags. Maybe the knees travel together or opposite directions. It's all up to you. What we're doing here is massaging that lower sacrum where the spine meets the tailbone. We carry a lot of tension in that area. It's creating any little movements that feel good for you. And as you feel ready, bring the legs and the feet back down onto the earth. For those of you on the floor, you can either keep the knees bent or you can bring them straight, coming back down to Shavasana. Just finding what feels comfortable for you. We'll just finish out with a couple minutes of quiet meditation. Just allowing our practice to settle in. Returning back to that anchor. As you feel ready, wiggling the fingers and the toes, maybe turning the head side to side if it feels good.
again as you feel ready. Giving the knees another gentle hug. Maybe another little back rub. For those of you on the floor, we'll roll over to the side. Feel free to stay there for a moment if you'd like. And as you feel ready, we'll all make our way up to a comfortable seated position. We'll fold the hands into Anjali Mudra. Ying and yang, left and right, coming together. Soft gaze towards the fingertips. Take a moment to acknowledge your practice. Give yourself thanks for taking the time. And thank you for practicing with me today. Namaste. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Great to see you, and I'll see you again soon.